You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Welcome to episode number 59 of the Just Japan podcast. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and I am the host of this weekly podcast that is about everything Japan.、Uh, I am a Canadian who lives and works right here in Japan, and each week I bring to you a different topic about an aspect of life here in Japan, something about Japanese culture, history, something Japan centric. And this week we've got a really awesome episode. I'm going to be Uh, talking this week with Mitsugi and Chiaki from the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast, which is really exciting. It's one of the biggest podcasts out there that's about、uh, animation from Japan, aka anime. And to be honest, everyone, I really don't know anything about anime. And this has been a, a constantly requested、uh, topic to, to, to hit. Uh, to talk about anime, and because of the fact that I really don't have a background in anime, who better to bring on than the two co hosts of one of the biggest anime podcasts out there? So, we're going to be talking to Mitsugi and Chiaki later on in the episode. Well, the voting has all wrapped up for the 10th annual podcast award ceremony that will be held in Las Vegas, Nevada on April 14th, and that will be hosted. Um, by Dennis Miller and Emily Morris.、Uh, now, of course, the Just Japan podcast was nominated for a 2015 podcast award under the travel category. And that's something that was really excited. And I know that so many of you amazing listeners out there really got motivated and、um, voted daily and really supported the Just Japan podcast by voting daily and, of course, sending me messages of congratulations and encouragement for simply being nominated.、Um, so, there you go. That's a pretty exciting stuff for the Just Japan podcast and myself, Kevin. That's me.、Um, now, also, something that, you know, kind of, kind of exciting news too Just Japan podcast got a bit of、uh, media coverage. In the form of an article written about myself and the podcast in the Cape Breton Post. Now, that is the local newspaper where I grew up. I grew up in a small town in eastern Canada. I grew up in a town called Lewisburg, Nova Scotia, a、uh, little, little town on the North Atlantic Ocean of probably about a thousand people, maybe less nowadays. And that's, that's where I spent my formative years. And the Cape Breton Post is the major newspaper that. Basically,、um, covers the c a b r e t o n Island. So, I'm from c a b r e t o n Island. <clears throat>、um, and yeah, so, so they wrote a story about me.、Um, the title is Lewisburg Native Nominated for Podcast Award. And、uh, that was pretty cool. It was really exciting to see that. And I hope that a few of you who are out there listening to the Just Japan podcast today or this evening、uh, came on board because of the fact that you read that article. If so, that would be really great. Um, if any of you out there discovered this podcast via the article in the Kebrat and Post, please connect with me. You know, send me a tweet on,、uh, at JLandKev or send me a message on the Facebook page or send an email to justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you.、Um, but yeah, so I'm going to put a link to that newspaper article in the show notes、uh, at busankevin.com. So go check that out and you can read the article for yourself. And there should be actually another article published later on this week.、Um, If, if it does come out in the next couple of days before I upload this episode, I'll, I'll throw in a little clip and, and tell you more about that. If not, next week I'll, I'll add that to the show notes. So go check out the show notes and read the article、uh, about the j o s e p h Pan podcast. Of course, guys, remember that you can subscribe to the Just Japan podcast in iTunes. You can listen to us in Stitcher Internet Radio, you can listen to us on SoundCloud. A lot of different ways you can listen to the Just Japan podcast. And also, if you are someone who enjoys listening to this podcast about Japan, please share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it all over the place in your social media. And let's work together and get more people listening to the Just Japan podcast. Now, spring is here and it's hit us with full force in this neck of the woods here in Japan, in Kobe, where I live.、Uh, Hanami. 
cherry blossom viewing. The cherry trees are all blooming. They're in full bloom right now uh, where I live. So I guess that this upcoming weekend, uh, which would be um, April 4th and 5th, a lot of them will probably be falling off the trees already. And I believe this upcoming weekend is the weekend for the Tokyo YouTube Hanami Party. <clears throat> I believe, um, and I'm assuming it's going to be in Yoyogi Koen, Yoyogi Park in Tokyo, where it normally is. Probably going to be a lot of people there. I will not. I've never been able to make it um, to uh, Tokyo for the YouTube Hanami party. Um, yeah, just <clears throat> just financially, I can't I can't make it up for uh, you know for for a Hanami party. Um, I suppose before I had children, I may have had the opportunity, but I, I never took it. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, so the following weekend on April 11th will be the Osaka, uh, YouTube, uh, Hanami gathering, uh, in Osaka Joe Park, Osaka Castle Park, and that starts at noon, and I'll put a link to that event in the show notes at BusanKevin.com, and I'll be heading to that one. I'm assuming, though, there will be definitely no Sakura left on the trees at that point. The trees will be just, the cherry trees will be green and leafy. Uh, but nonetheless, there'll be some good people there with some good conversations and good drinks and good this and that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So um, you should, guys should check that out. So it is, again, like I said, it is Hanami season here. I had a fun experience last weekend with meeting up with a group of friends and their families and their children. Uh, I was with my family and my kids and, and all that. We all met up in Osaka Castle Park. We had a really great time. Big picnic, a lot of fun. Kids played a lot, um, you know, crashed it really early in the evening. Um, and it's been fun just actually just kind of kicking around the neighborhood with my family over the last few days, uh, the last few days of my of my spring vacation, uh, just enjoying the, the warm weather, the sun, and the cherry blossoms. And that's definitely one of, one of the best parts about Japan is spring in Japan when the cherry trees are, are blooming. I mean, that is uh, blossoming, I should say. That's a very, very big part of Japanese culture and a real connection that Japanese people have with spring. So if you ever have the chance to be in Japan in the spring, you definitely um, take the opportunity to go to some parks, um, have some picnics, and enjoy Hanami season. So folks, a little podcasting news, something that I, I found out about last week. Um, it was a bit of a, surpri a surprise to me, um, but it's something that has made me very happy. Uh, there is a new podcast on the scene here in Japan, a Japan-centric podcast, something that we definitely need more of, I think. Um, and it is uh, hosted by two former uh, guests on the Just Japan podcast, two friends of the show, Jenny and Kat. So it is called uh, Kimochi Uncensored, and the Kimochi Uncensored podcast can be found on iTunes and Stitcher Internet Radio. They got themselves a Facebook page and a Twitter uh, all those links are going to be in the show notes. Um, so Kat was on a couple of episodes of the Just Japan podcast. Um, she was on an episode about life in Okinawa. And she no longer actually lives in Okinawa. She lives in Yamaguchi-ken. And she was on another episode about nightmare apartments in Japan. And uh, you may remember Jenny from uh, the episode about being a voice actor slash narrator in Japan, as well as um, being a foreign woman in Japan. And both women have very dynamic personalities. They're really... Uh, really great people. They both they're both YouTube active YouTubers, um, with very very cool channels. Um, so yeah, so definitely. Um, episode one was released on the weekend, and uh, go check it out. Go go subscribe to them on iTunes. Kimochi Uncensored. That's K I M O C H I, Uncensored. And uh, again, all those links uh, for this podcast are going to be in the show notes. Go show them your support. If you're interested in Japan, you'll definitely want to go and subscribe to their podcast. So do that up, Just Japan Podcast listeners. Now, folks, of course, you can support the Just Japan Podcast by go checking out our Patreon campaign. That's right, patreon.com slash Just Japan Podcast. It's a great way for you to um, support the podcast that you like so much. Um, check out the rewards. You can get yourself some uh, bonus podcasts sent to you. Uh, free ebook, my ebook, uh, Teaching in Asia: Tales in the Real Deal. It's on Amazon. I wrote it a few years ago um, for for uh, people who become patrons. Um, go check out the different incentives. Um, you can get yourself a free copy of that book, possibly, as well as again several uh, bonus Just Japan podcast podcasts each month. So go check that out. The links in the show notes. Patreon.com slash Just Japan Podcast. 
Okay, so we're, we're about to jump into the interview portion of the Just Japan podcast, where I interview uh, Mitsugi and Chiaki, who are co-hosts of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. And this is a podcast that's been around for quite a long time. It's been around for six years, which is uh, not so common these days. You know, most podcasts kind of fizzle out when people realize how much work it takes to put one together and to maintain it. Um but uh, their podcast has been around for quite a while. It's an audio podcast, but as well as uh, they have a YouTube presence as well. So they, they record a lot of their live shows and uh, definitely very cool. Um, you know what? Uh, so anyone out there with an interest in anime, Japanese animation, you're really going to enjoy this. And even, to be honest, if, if, you're, if it's a topic that you, you don't have a lot of interest in, um, sit back. You're going to definitely learn some interesting things. Um, uh, you're going to walk away from this interview saying, hey, well, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, I never thought about that, or maybe I should check this out. Um, these these two folks really know their stuff. They're very passionate about the topic, and they make it very accessible to folks like me who don't know anything about the topic. So sit back and listen to my interview with uh, Mitsugi and Chiaki, um, the co-hosts of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. <laughs> Okay, so Just Japan Podcast listeners, welcome to episode number 59 of the Just Japan Podcast, Anime Addicts Anonymous Podcast. And this evening, I've got two guests who've taken the time to stop by and share a little bit, a lot about the world of anime with all of us. So um, thank you, Chiaki and Mitsugi, for joining us tonight. Hey, Kevin, it's glad to be, I'm glad to be here, and uh, thanks for taking the time to have us on your show. Always great to talk to someone who's out in Japan. Oh, well, I'm so happy to have you guys. Um, and yeah, so so here we are. Um, and I, I always I'm saying this evening or tonight because that's where it, you know when I'm doing the interview here. So I go from that perspective. <laughs> My brain will start you know getting mixed up if if I talk about you know morning there and evening here. But um, nope, same way. Yeah. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nine a.m. here, so you're in the future. I yeah. am in the future. Thirteen hours ahead. Yes, and it's it's looking pretty good, guys. It's looking pretty good. Um, awesome. <laughs> so, uh, could you tell the Just Japan podcast listeners a little bit about the Anime uh, Addicts Anonymous podcast and uh, how long you've been doing it and why you decided to start the podcast? Well, you're kind of lucky. You have both of the founders yeah. with you today, so we're kind of the original. And uh, we started back in 2009. And have been doing it fairly weekly since, yeah. minus a, a week or two for Christmas or something, because yeah. we're selfish and take those days off. <laughs> oh my gosh, how could you do that? I know, seriously. <laughs> yeah, doing a podcast is is uh, really really awesome and oftentimes a really rewarding thing, especially when you hear from from people who listen and you know you get you get great feedback from them. And you know, three hundred episodes later, we're rich and famous. Yeah, we're super rich and famous. That's that's <laughs> podcasting is the key to becoming the next Bill Gates. That was the goal, you know, because the <laughs> and, uh, and everything we're saying is dripping with sarcasm right because now. Because the uh, the the anime world is, is 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 a world that is plush with potential listeners. No, I'm just kidding. But um, no, it's it's uh, even operating inside a niche a niche like anime. You find that it, it's super rewarding. And if if anybody wants to check us out, our website's www.aaapodcast.com. So we're always trying to. And you can find us by AAA Podcast or Anime uh, Anime Addicts Anonymous Podcast. That's right. I, if, if, if you just, I've, I mean, I've been I've been reading a bit about you guys over the last few days, and I mean, you type in Anime Addicts and things just start popping up <laughs> all over the place for you things guys. start you, popping uh, up that's that's interesting so kevin i heard that you had some 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 listeners of your own that were clamoring for anime content that's absolutely right um that's right uh, people people have been asking me over the the year and change i've been doing the show um to do an episode of an anime um and to be honest it's it's one of the things where i mean the reason why i bring different people on every week with this podcast is because uh, my scope of Japan is quite limited, and I don't want to basically BS my way around a topic. So, I mean, there's no point in me trying to do to to talk to my guests about anime because I honestly don't know anything about anime. Mm. And you yeah. live in Japan. How dare you? How dare I? I know. I know. How dare I break the stereotype? Okay. Well, then, well, then, one of my goals today is to is to get you to watch some anime after yep. this interview. Make so. you an anime addict. That's absolutely. Cast mission. 
I've got I've got nothing against anime. It's just something I've never watched. I mean, aside from um, Totoro. Totoro. Yeah. Totoro. Yeah. I think that's really the only. And I've, I know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I've I've sat in my living room, confused watching Japanese TV with my <laughs> wife and family while there are various animes on. Um, now, okay. Now, here's a question. Now, I mean, and don't. This is where I will glean. My ignorance will will shine through. Um, I assume a show something like Yokai Watch would be just considered a Japanese cartoon. You would not call that anime, would you? You know, what is anime and what is not anime is a subject that's heavily debated. Yeah, that's a touchy um, subject right there. Because because you have things like you have things like Yokai Watch where Which my son loves. Yeah, that was all the rage when we when we were out in Japan. I'm pretty sure it is still all the rage. Oh yeah. yes. Oh god, it's it's only god, getting I, hotter, getting hotter and hotter. Bye bye Pokemon. Hello, <laughs> Yokai Watch. Pokey who? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, but you have, you have stuff like that where you can have an argument be made of, oh, this is more of a, a Japanese cartoon than an anime and other people who will say, no, anime is animation from Japan, end of story, period, right. exclamation point. Okay. And, and so they'll loop it in. And then on the other side, you'll have people saying anime is a style. And then that gets into the whole debate of Avatar, Legend of Korra, those kinds of shows produced, um, produced by American companies made in South Korea, I believe those those were made in and they have the anime style so so are they anime if they feel like anime if they kind of look like anime does that make them anime so so what is anime is almost its own philosophical debate yeah kevin i think the most common answer you'll get over here is that anime is anime is animation that's done in japan yeah so to answer your question yokai watch is anime okay most people okay so, so no now for Okay, so anime. Let I me. Mean, okay, if we very simplistically speaking, animation from Japan, quote unquote, could be anime. Would you say yes. that a lot of the quote unquote more hardcore anime fans would agree with that, or would that be? I mean, you've already yeah. said that's a point of contention. Um, I, I think so. I think it'd be like vehemently. They would vehemently argue They're that bloody hell no. Yes, <laughs> there, there's no other possible answer. It has to be from Japan. Yes, <laughs> like um, basically like Batman the cartoon that you'd see in America or in the yeah. West. That is not anime. Because even people. even using that as an example, there was a while back where Marvel partnered with Studio Madhouse, which is a, a very famous anime production house. And Madhouse created Iron Man, the anime, right. X-Men, the anime, and Wolverine, the anime. And oh, okay. those those are American properties. They're American superheroes. And, and they had a little bit of a different style compared to what you would expect to the normal anime style. But... I think far and away by by fans, they weren't cartoons and and they weren't they weren't anything else but anime because they were produced in Japan. Yeah, okay. it's like you have X Men from the '90s cartoon in America, yeah, not anime, but mm -hmm. X Men made in Japan 15 years later. Oh yeah, that's anime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I mean that I, I suppose now. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll jump in with a little bit of something that confused me recently. Um, uh, you're familiar with the Teen Titans, yes. Yeah. Um, so a couple of years back, a student gave me a. So okay, I've been living in Asia since 2002. Um, I'm in a bit of a bubble, um, in in a way, not necessarily a bad way, but I'm in a bubble. So I'm not always up on what's happening in America and Canada, like kind of Western culture. Um, so I don't have I don't have much time to consume a lot of content because i'm i spend most of my free time creating content like podcasting um, i do a lot of youtube stuff over the years um but yeah so so a student gave me <clears throat> this like double box set of uh, a box set of uh teen titans and i just like literally threw it in my shelf and it was there and then i i, I had a child and he's grown bigger and he's four and a half pushing five now and he saw it one day and i've never watched teen titans and he was like daddy what's that i'm like oh it's teen titans i mean it's let's well, let's throw it in and start watching and we watched a few episodes and it was like okay i'm like it's kind of a bit dark for a kid who's a bit over four but uh all right um and uh but then then we were watching one episode and all of a sudden the theme song was in japanese they were singing like nihongo and it was kind of like this kind of i was like what he was looking at me like dad what's going on here i'm confused what's what's happening are they like and i was just trying to think of myself like were they trying to do this kind of like anime twist on Teen Titans? Like sometimes the theme song was in Japanese, kind of a strange Nihongo, and I don't know, kind of yeah, 
It says here that, um, yeah, I don't know a lot about Teen Titans because most anime fans would not consider Teen Titans to be anime. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm just looking here, and while the country of origin is the United States, the theme song is performed by uh, Puffy Ami Yumi. Yeah. Okay. I, so. I think the thing to say about Teen Titans, and, and you have it up, Mitsugi, what, when was the release for Teen Titans, the original release? Um... 2003. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I want to say I remember watching watching Teen Titans when it was on TV, and it, and it is a good show. I would agree with you. A little dark for, for Push and Five, but yeah. <laughs> but still a good show. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it is a cool show. It's just like, I was like, and then I've got a daughter who's like two, when she'd come walking in the room, like staring at it too, I'm like, Kai, can we not, can we maybe turn this, <laughs> turn this off until your sister's not around? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think it was I, I want to I would say it would it was in part one of those decisions where 2002 you had you had the anime, you had the anime of the 90s that really put anime on the map, especially here in the States, because that was the heyday when you had Dragon Ball Z, you had Sailor Moon, you had Cowboy Bebop. All of these were running on TV and and a lot of anime fans who are now our age, who are in their 20s type of thing, have the late nineties, early two thousands as like this golden year for them in anime when anime was, was a lot more commonplace in the States, so Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, you know, you can name a ton that were over here. And, and I would, I would guess without looking this up, but guess that it on behalf of the American studios saying, you mm-hmm. know, this is really popular and we want to kind of brand it with that same kind of look and feel as all these other anime shows that, are really big right now. Mm. Let's ride the wave and make some uh, make some okane. Make yeah, some money. I, th- I think it's the same in Japan, right? You have a lot of Japanese pop family have English words injected into them. Oh, of Whether course, people- yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you have a the a, same a, yeah. verse, a pop song with uh, not just not just Japan, but in Korea as well. I mean, I think a, a lot through Asia, where you have you know English is cool, it's kakui, so you've got like some you know, some English lines in the chorus or something like that. Right. Yeah. And I would say this was the same. It anime for the for the target demographic that this show was trying to reach at the time, anime resonated really well. And and again, without actually researching it, that's my that's my guess. Cool, cool. Well, okay. So I'm curious. I mean, um in your Okay, so we you know, you've you've talked about like there being a debate about what may be anime, what may not. In in your mind, for both of you as uh, anime fans, what do you consider anime? I consider anime. I, I fall under the definition of, um, you know, I, I, I'm a little split. I'm like 75% anime is animation produced in Japan. Okay. But okay. then I kind of have a, a sub, maybe even more than 75%. But then I then I kind of temper that with it is still a bit of a stylistic choice on on behalf of the creators. And, and that has changed over time. The definition of what that stylistic choice, choices look like have differed as with any medium. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking of a, one of, a really good example that I recommend to anyone to watch it. It won an Oscar for a short film a couple years ago is uh, an animation called La Maison des Petites Cubes. And, and I, my French is awful. So please excuse that. But it was an animation produced in Japan. That was produced in Japan, right? Did yeah, it? I think yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that, by the, the strictest definition of a- anime is animation produced in Japan, means that that's anime. But if you look up pictures of this animation, um, La Maison and Petite Cubes, it doesn't look or feel like anime at all. And and that's not a bad thing. It's just at a glance, no one would think it was from Japan specifically. So so I say I'll raise it up to like 85 even percent anime is animation produced in Japan. But with that little caveat of like a 15 percent of it still kind of has to maintain a certain look and feel. Okay. Yeah, yeah I subscribe to a, uh, you know, I, I, I'm in the camp that an, that anime is animation from Japan. I know that the... If you were to write out the katakana for for animation, you know it begins with anime. So mm-hmm. I know that Japanese people don't really have the same kind of weird prejudice. Yeah, and and I know that it's really petty and stupid, and that people should just just should just call everything that's animated anime. But it's I think it's just a nice way to keep the two straight mm-hmm. because an anime that comes out of Japan and anime that comes out of the West is not the same type of stuff. So oh, absolutely not. No, very different. Very very different. 
Um, okay, well, <clears throat> I'm curious. How did you guys become interested in anime? What what first kind of caught you, got you excited about it? Was there like a one one moment? Was there one particular show or movie that got you interested in it when you were younger? Well, for me, my, the first anime that I ever saw was My Neighbor Totoro, ah. which is probably the most famous you know, I think Mickey Mouse actually has surpassed Totoro in Japan, which which kind of makes me sad. That's kind of the impression I got. No, I but. think I think I really think you're right. Actually, to be honest, like my daughter, who is now not quite two, she sees we we've got some Totoro dolls around the house and plush yeah. toys, and she sees Mickey Mouse anywhere, and she's like Mickey, Mickey. Yeah. She Total sees Totoro. Totoro and not a, no idea. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, well, not yet, not yet, because I've seen yeah. My Neighbor Totoro, and that is a really nice movie. I like it. <laughs> the uh, the boring answer, yeah, I, I like it too. the The boring answer to this question is that I started watching Dragon Ball Z on Toonami, like everybody else. Yeah. Okay. But when I got to college, I was just like this lowly freshman slime, <laughs> just like just like a lot of freshmen, and yeah, and the president, the president of the anime club was a senior, and he was kind of a dick. So, um, you so, know, that's really funny. I heard the same thing about you when I was a lowly freshman yeah, slime. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was like the president of the anime club's better, real dick. You better watch it, Chiaki. <laughs> so the president of the anime club took, was taking total advantage of me and he gave me a gigantic box of, of anime VHS tapes that were all old stuff. And he said, here, convert this all into DVD. And there were like a hundred, a hundred VHS tapes, but he knew that I had the ability to do that. So. I did it, but as I did... It's still not nice, though, right? It's still not nice no. to do that to somebody. It's slave labor. Yeah, it's just, exactly. It's despicable. Make, what else do you use freshmen for? Put VHS on DVD. Oh, my God. <laughs> Little does he know that I was using him because as I was converting all of these VHS tapes to DVD, I was watching all the VHS tapes that he gave me, um, which included older stuff that are classics like Record of Lodos Wars, uh, Most Dangerous Geist, Bubblegum Crisis... There were some Macross tapes in there and some other stuff that, you know, if you list those names to current anime fans, they're like, what the hell is all that? I have no idea what those anime are because they're all from, you know, the 90s and 80s. So I think that's kind of when my fandom kind of exploded because I had suddenly had a huge exposure. You know, similarly, I, I too, was the Dragon Ball Z Sailor Moon. Uh, I, I could guarantee that a member of my family was recording Dragon Ball Z at like four four thirty whenever it came on. If I wasn't home from school in time, that's cute. And and if I if I got home, if something kept me late at school and I couldn't watch my Dragon Ball Z, and and someone knew that, and someone had a VHS tape ready for me with it on uh, it. Um, the days before TiVo. I know we're you so poor, old. You poor child. And then uh. And then I, you know, I look back and at the time it was normal, but the more, the older I get and the, the more I talk about it, the more I realize this, this store that opened up not far from my house was really kind of ma a magical transformative place for me. And it was, it was an anime, but they, they set themselves up. They weren't like a figure shop or something. They really focused, they had, they had some wall scrolls and they had some figures and they had some bags, of course, but they really focused on selling VHS tapes and say VHS tapes because DVDs weren't around at the time and they had a wall that was for sale and then they had a wall that was for rent and you could okay. become a member and you could rent VHS tapes and I would just go in there on a weekend on a Friday on the way home from school my mom would take me in and I would just pick stuff out that looked cool and of course I watched a wow. lot of shit that way that really was not appropriate for me to watch that was I grabbed Ninja Scroll one time. That was how I watched. Your mom should not be renting you Ninja Scroll. <laughs> that, that That's I, not good. I watched uh, Vampire Hunter D another time with nudity included. Is that why you're um, so messed up? I, you now? know, it explains a lot, right? I got it. Uh, but <laughs> I, it was, it was a really cool place. And and not only did I see a lot of anime, but they also had kind of in the back section they had a viewing area. Well, they just welcomed anybody who wanted to take something off their wall and pop it in the VHS and hang out and meet other people who liked anime. And, and my friends and I would go in there and we do that sometimes. And it was it was a really nice place that was kind of this uh, space, judgment free zone, you know, whatever you want to call it. And and I saw a lot of anime that way and it just didn't stop. Uh, cool. Kevin, can, can I give you a parental tip? 
never show your children <laughs> Ninja Scroll. That's probably yeah. a good idea. Now, you know, I've never seen Ninja Scroll, but to be honest, uh, uh, earlier this week, um, I was re-listening to an episode of the G-Pod with Anthony Joe, where you guys Arthur. are on. Um, he interviewed you guys last year. Yeah. And he was talking about Ninja Scroll, and I heard <laughs> you guys talking about Ninja Scroll, and I've never seen Ninja Scroll, but it sounds like it's something, yes, uh, no parent should let their child see. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it's in it is it's in, it, it's violent in a way that people who have not seen anime have never seen before. <laughs> like there's nothing I could show you in Western media that would match the the violence level of Ninja Scroll. Wow, the, I couldn't. I don't think you could rate it. It would definitely be NC seven. Well, that's oh, yeah. that's like one of the things. Like when um you hear uh things I hear since I've been here. Like you know people who who talk about like on you know YouTube or on some forums and they're joking about or maybe they're not joking even they talk about like anime there's like such there are such dark areas of anime um with like you know things like rape and horrible stuff um you know there's a, I guess there's subcultures right yes well i and you know i i look at it I try to explain this to people and it seems so obvious to me, but I didn't realize how obvious it wasn't until I really started talking to people about anime mm -hmm. and, and kind of being in a position to explain it where anime in, in the States and cartoons and animated features are something that's been produced primarily for kids until you had kind of the Simpsons started making way for things like South Park and family guy mm -hmm. started, opening the doors for for things geared to adults and adult humor but but even then it's kind of humor so so animation is to entertain or for children or some combination you know thereof and if it's for adults it's entertaining and it's really really serious but anime in japan never had that kind of stigma and so you'll find anime that covers every topic it's kind of like asking you know well what these are out there well everything there's there's literally everything out there if you want a movie about my little pony you can find it and if you want a movie about someone having their mouth stitched to another person's you know bot but you can find that too like mm. literally there is no holds bar because it's just whatever can come the human centipede Mizuki's looking at me like i'm crazy that's a real movie and it's effed up but that's my point is that what is the what is the rating of this podcast this is a you're this is a clean podcast. Well, it is a clean podcast, but don't worry. We're, no no one has actually been saying anything that's you know, well, we haven't been saying anything really explicit yet, you know. We're you know, uh, I we're, mean, we're letting imaginations run wild. It, but is, that's okay. it is a movie. I, I I refrain from going into more detail than that. If someone wants to look it up, do so at your own I, risk. I suppose I suppose when I think about it now, like when you walk into any convenience, um, for those of you guys that there, that's a convenience store in Japan. I mean, there's a huge rack of manga, which are comic books. And they're not geared to children. They're for adults. Yeah. And yeah. you walk in any convenience store at any time of day, um, especially around rush hour and whatnot, there's going to be just uh, a wall of adult men normally standing there just reading <laughs> comic books. Yeah. And there's, I mean, it's and it's right beside the porno magazine section. And I, I know that a lot of those uh, comic books are pornographic comic books. And there's just, you know, people just stand there unabashedly quite normally reading them. Well, Kevin, I have many a fond memory <laughs> standing in, in the in, in Combini, uh, you know, buying various One Piece candies. <laughs> but no, seriously, wow. I, I do know what you're talking about. The uh, there's the adult content that you see in manga in in convenience stores in Japan is probably a little shocking to uh, mm. to a Western person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as anime goes, I think we've sort of transitioned away from the intensely violent stuff. Like, there have been some shows recently that, that in the last six months that, namely, Tokyo Ghoul is one of them, and the other one that, that uh, I'm thinking of as Terraformers. It got really heavily censored on Japanese television, really heavily censored. Okay. And I think it's because we've sort of transitioned away from intense violence in anime in the last 10 years or so. If you go back, most of the really horrible, Violent stuff, including Ninja Scroll, is contained to the '80s and the early '90s. Yeah. Okay. And you can find some some really grotesque hentai content that has a lot of ex excessive violence even right now. But 
In terms of actual stuff you might see on Japanese television, I think that that time has passed. Well, mostly. I mean, you just say the term hentai, which essentially means pervert in Japanese. I mean, that's very subculture. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, dark dark subculture. But I mean, uh, I mean that's uh, that that alone is a word that doesn't have a very uh, nice kind of fuzzy vibe around it. Yeah, yeah. And and like I said, it's really you know anything you can find anything in in any other medium. You can find it in anime. Whether whether it should be there or not is a completely different debate. But you can find it as an art form. You can find people expressing all kinds of things. Well, I suppose it's kind of like podcasting in a way. I mean, yeah. as far as podcasting goes, I mean, there is literally a podcast for anything out there. I mean, how many people are listening to it? Who knows? But there is literally, I'm, I'm assuming, a podcast for everything out there. Yeah. Um, because, you know, people people are able to produce them on their own, um, you know, and, and, and do what they want. Um, wow. OK, well, OK, so I'm curious. OK, so by the way, I just had a um, epiphany. I think okay. maybe I'm, I'm 39 years old. I'm, I'm maybe I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm such an old fogey that I'm starting to forget things. But as a young child, I remember I have an older brother and he was really into the show. And I just remembered I have seen a lot of anime as a young child um robotech the macro yeah, saga robotech. Okay. i've seen every episode of robotech war the macro saga i think i'm just looking now there was like um how many there was like 36 episodes i've seen them all because my brother <laughs> loved that show and he had um not just he he watched them all continuously and he had them on vhs but um he had the books too um he would read I, I didn't read them but he read them um but i do remember watching you know guys in giant robot suits fighting monster aliens yeah i mean it's it's surprising to that was, people that's just, 80s that's like yeah. mid, mid 80s yeah. i remember well you had all the way back into oh gosh what was it 60s or 70s kimba the white lion that got localized in the states osamu tezuka i mean you've had anime popping up here and there in the west for a long time it's just a matter of Kind of, as you said, that epiphany moment when someone goes, oh, yeah, I have watched something. Yeah. Like <laughs> Wait a second. You're right. That wasn't. <laughs> so Robotech, we just discussed something somewhat related to Robotech on our last podcast episode, which was episode 269. Uh, I think that was titled Great Old Anime That You Probably Haven't Seen. Because most newer anime fans really don't go past like the last 10 years. And there's okay. a lot of great stuff from the early 90s. And even the 80s that people have never even heard of, okay. Robotech came up in that discussion because Robotech actually is an anime that um, ha gives people a sour taste in their mouth. Some people, because Robotech is actually a story that's adapted from the content of three different anime. Oh, really? Okay. So they, they, they took the Super Dimension Fortress Macross, um, a super dimension cavalry, Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber, and they kind of combined them into this weird, I don't want to call it a monstrosity because I think the plot line sort of worked, but most people would tell you just go watch Super Dimension Fortress Macross. I, I've seen some of Robotech. I think there's nothing wrong with watching Robotech, but some people will, the more, the more intensely hardcore people will go into an instant tirade. Okay. If, at the mention of, of Robotech, but... Hey, anything that gets mecha anime into the United States sphere at all, I'm okay with that because they need we need more mecha in the United States. Yeah, mecha has really died off. Mecha was like a thing of the '80s, and yes. then it just really hasn't. You, you'll still get pockets like the long running shows, Macross, Gundam, things like that. Yeah, they're just mega giants. But other than that, we haven't really had kind of a point in time where every other show was super robot, giant robot, something like that. Well, I mean, hey, in my, in, in my case, it was like me and my, my myself, my big brother living in a, a rural fishing village in eastern Nova Scotia, Canada in the 80s, watching giant robots from Japan. That's awesome. I mean, space, wherever they were running around, stomping on things and fighting bad guys. Um, so, I mean, I guess when you look at it that way, you know, it was I don't I don't now and then when I think about it too, we only had three TV channels at that point, and I'm not joking. This is like welcome to like early '80s or mid '80s Canada. We had um our public broadcaster CBC. We had one private broadcaster and a French channel, and <laughs> we didn't speak French, so that was so really of, basically we had two. <laughs> well, Ke Kevin, I grew up in West Virginia, and we we barely have running water. And that's today. That is not true. <laughs> that was okay. just the last week. 
I'm, um, I, I, I'm kidding, but like back in the back when I was a, a kid, you know, in like you know 1998, I mean, we were still using like three kilobytes per second dial-up internet. You know, <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Talking talking about these anime that got us into it, and talking about things like Giant Robot, Super Robot, and the fact of, like I said before, you can find almost anything made into anime i think that's one of the reasons why it draws a lot of people to it i I realize this is kind of on a tangent but i i think that's one of the appeals of anime is that anime unlike a lot of other mediums is is a blank page quite literally an artist sits down and there's nothing stopping that artist from drawing anything they want it's not like a lot of other shows. I mean, yeah, it's still governed by by budget and how much time they have and, and the quality of artists they can hire and, and things like that. But it's not like other TV shows where if a TV show in the state says we want to do a super robot show, you know, you're looking at millions and millions of dollars of budget. Whereas in anime, if you take, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars or or however much you want you're going to spend on a show and however long it's going to run, Yeah, you can make, that just determines the quality of it. But you, the artist can make it anything they want. It's not like here in the States where the budget is going to determine kind of what type of show it is, where, oh, we have this budget, so we got to do a hospital drama because that's all we can afford. <laughs> um, mm. and, and I think it's, it's a really interesting medium because of that, because there are no rules. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I, in Hollywood, um, you have budgets. And, um, you know, these days of the movies that are, for the most part, aside, aside from some sleepers that maybe kind of catch on here and there, I mean, for the most part, all the, 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 the big budget movies, I mean, the big budget is, wow, it's it's tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions. Yeah. And it is, it is like I said, it is similar in anime where you can you can look at a high budget anime and a low budget anime, and you'll tell the difference in in the music and the animation and the style and quality. But that doesn't mean that they could still both be super robot anime. It's just one of them is a prettier looking super robot anime. Hmm. Okay. Well, lots to talk about anime because that's what we're here to talk about. Now, I'm curious for those out there who are listening. Um, and there are a growing number of you. So thank you, all of you guys who are listening, um, who may be like me and are a little in the dark about anime. Um, what would you? What are some suggestions you might have for some people who are interested in exploring anime? They want to dip their toes into the water. Um, what would you say are some good beginning, I don't know, quote unquote, beginner TV shows, movies for people who who want to start watching anime? Well, I want to say, first of all, that I don't really believe in the term beginner for, for anime viewing. Like, I know that there are some, there's some anime that's pretty intense, and maybe you don't want to start off watching that. You know, if you're, tra- if you're introducing your best friend to anime for the first time, you wouldn't want to freak them out with Ninja Scroll. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> but, but I mean, generally, I mean, or maybe you do. Maybe you do. <laughs> but depending, but, depending on who they are. Yeah. yeah, maybe your friend's a sicko. But most anime isn't like that. So, what I've done here is I've put together a list of stuff that I think a lot of people would not consider be- "quote unquote" beginner anime, but I don't really believe in that term. Okay. So okay. I've kind of divided them up by genre, so people who like specific genres can find at least one show that I and I think all of these are really excellent. Yeah, right, I'm awesome. like like I was just saying, it's it's a medium, and it basically think of what you want to watch, and then there's a good show in that genre. So okay, okay. I think any of the Ghibli movies, the Studio yeah. Ghibli films, are really amazing. And those are, I, I want to say, if if you have some beginner, maybe it, it is Ghibli, but that's only because the the topics vary so widely. You have everything from comedy, comedy to drama, and they're always high, well produced. Okay. Yeah, and that's spelled G H I B L I for people who have no who can't who can't. Uh, who may struggle with the spelling, but if you like action anime, there are some really there's a lot of great stuff. The a lot these are a little these are for more these are more for adults. Mm-hmm. If you want if you want action that's for children, you should probably look at the shonen genre. So there's like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Hunter Hunter X Hunter. But mm-hmm. for adults, I I like to recommend Black Lagoon. Okay. It's a it's an anime that's about. I guess they're kind of like pirates, but they're they're not pirates like on a pirate ship. They're sort of like smugglers, you know. And there's a lot of intense action in in Black Lagoon, and it takes place in like a futuristic version of Singapore, I think. Oh, okay. okay. Um, 
I showed I showed Berserk to a friend the other night. Berserk's a little more violent, but it's very dark, set in a set in in, in a more medieval setting. So Berserk is really excellent. Uh, for comedy, I recommend Azumanga Daio is really good. And if you like more of like a perverted comedy, I think Golden Boy is probably the best. Golden Boy, Golden Boy is kind of like the Family Guy yeah. of anime. Everyone loves it. Oh, okay, okay. I've never, I've never showed Golden Boy to like a college age student or um, a kind of twenties or older even, and not had them get a laugh out of it. But they just. That being said, I also showed it to people who I know weren't super conservative or or would have issues. <laughs> With some of the stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I have a couple more here. For drama, one of my personal favorite shows is Great Teacher Onizuka. That was a really popular manga in Japan. It's about a, it's about an ex-Yakuza gang member who becomes a high school teacher and helps to, uh, well, they actually put him in middle school, but he helps to sort of straighten out his, te- his students. Oh, okay. Um, one by one. And, uh, <laughs> okay, really okay. And uh, Ghost in the Shell is really excellent for sci-fi. That's a classic. There's a new Ghost in the Shell anime coming out in the spring of this year called Ghost in the Shell Arise. And that series has been going on forever. So if you watch the original Ghost in the Shell movie from whatever year that was in, like 90, 96 or something, um, that could be totally wrong. I'm not really sure. But there's plenty of content there. And um, fantasy is a genre that's pretty much dead. But if you want to go back and watch some good fantasy, I recommend The Twelve Kingdoms and Record of Lodos Wars. So that's a that's a long list for you there. Nice, nice. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's uh, some. Uh, I mean, to be honest, these are some things I've actually heard of. Of course, I've I've heard of Ghost in the Shell many times. Yeah. <laughs> um, even as far as the Ghibli movies go, um, I've 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 heard of so many. And they've been around me all the time, and I haven't like like Ponyo, 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 Ponyo. Is that it? Yeah, Ponyo. Da, 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 yep. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da. I remember That's when that song was like the rage. It was like my first or second year <laughs> here in Japan. Um, never saw the movie. Um, and it, I don't know. It's good. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so, um, you know. Obviously, if you're here in Japan like I am, and I know that actually, I think something like 15% of the listeners of the podcast are here in Japan. Um, you know, we can, we can, uh, if we so choose, apparently I haven't made the choice, to uh, to access uh, anime or manga at any point if we want to. Um, for those who are not in Japan, you know, folks who are in the States like you guys are, they're in Canada, they're Australia, um, where are some good places they can go maybe or places online that you might suggest where they can get their hands on or watch some good anime? Um, Crunchyroll is a great one. And that's a service that's been rolled out internationally to many countries. A lot of, a lot of these streaming services, you'll have issues of, of region and things like that. Okay. And, um, you know, this, this service isn't available in your region and, Oh, yeah. Tell me about a geo. Yes, yeah, so what they call it geo tagging. Yeah. No, no, no geo. Whatever. I know what you mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're and, you're and not in America. You can't watch this video. You suck. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So Crunchyroll is a good one because I remember reading a bunch where they've gotten in a ton of countries around the world. Um, was that a, is that an uh, app or is that like a streaming web service? They, How does that? It's it's a streaming web service. They do simulcasts, okay. and um, basically, there's a free version where you can watch it with ads, and I think it's up to 480 or 720. And then there's a paid service, and it's the the usual amount, like seven bucks a month or so, where you can get um, you get episodes that basically within 24 hours of them airing in Japan. So you get them sooner than the free service. You also have no ads and can watch it in an up to 1080p. And the other good thing about the paid service is then you can access it through any of their apps. And they're on, I know they're on PS3. I think they're on PS4. You can get them on iPhone. You can get them on iPhone, Android. And I want to say they're on Xbox One, but I don't have an Xbox One, so don't quote me on that. Um, But Crunchyroll... Crunchyroll is kind of the service because oh, nice. they, they went out there and they said, we're going to be the Netflix of anime. We're, oh, we're not cool. going to have a bunch of other stuff. We're going to be the Netflix of anime. And the, the only thing with Crunchyroll is that the way that they work is because they're licensing recent shows many times, not all the time, but many times once the show has finished airing in Japan and a North American or a licensing company has picked it up for distribution rights, it'll then be removed off of Crunchyroll. 
So okay, okay. not all the time. Sometimes Crunchyroll and, and the other company will work at a deal or it's not picked up or whatever the case may be. But mm-hmm. Crunchyroll is a really great resource for uh, oftentimes newer, currently airing anime. Um, Hulu Plus has also really started stepping up. Hulu and, of course, Hulu Plus being the paid version mm-hmm. has, has started really stepping up their anime game. Okay. Um, and Hulu Plus, I found being a, a little bit bigger than Crunchyroll, they they can kind of hang on to shows a bit more. One of the ones that we're ro- watching right now for the podcast that we should have watched forever ago, and it's kind of a little bit of a retro review at this point, is Steins Gate. And that's really big in the anime community. But it wasn't on Crunchyroll anymore because that show within the past five or so years. I forget the exact date. But um, I think it's like, uh, like 2010 or 2011. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's about five years or so. And it's not on Crunchyroll anymore because it's been licensed by Funimation. But Hulu Plus, being a lot larger of a company and having a lot more deals with networks and companies, still has it through Funimation. And they even have some of the dub that has been released up there. So Hulu Plus is a good one. Um, Crunchyroll is also a good one. Netflix sometimes gets anime, like Knights of Sidonia, uh, which was two seasons ago, was a, a Netflix exclusive anime. Okay. But they're kind of on on the fringe um and and one thing that i'm just going to i'm just going to kind of give a shout out to and you can edit this later if you want oh my god um it's it's not that what bad what are you going to say embracing I, <laughs> embracing myself when when we were in japan there are things called um virtual private servers and virtual networks that can make your router look as though it's in a different country i won't I, I, I won't i won't i won't i've talked about this before we'll leave that okay. in vpns okay. baby I, yeah, I was I was gonna say I don't know because it's it's not entirely like yeah well you know uh, I'm sure the but, FBI is not listening to this podcast you know or yeah. whatever whatever the NSA who who cares it's not no the, the the Motion Picture Association of America whatever yeah VPN yeah. clients yes good so, to mask so, mask your computer um so you don't know where so they, they don't know where it is. Exactly. I had I had a free one that worked just on my computer, and that was how I got to Crunchyroll and Netflix and stuff when I was in Japan. Yeah. And but uh, though I think Crunchyroll is now in Japan, I think I saw that Netflix is there or coming. So that ne- this yeah, may ne- be the Netflix point. is apparently coming this fall. Okay, yeah. Um, but I don't know it, if the um, the quantity is going to differ or not. Well, I, but, I know that's like with, for example, Hulu. I mean, I don't have it myself. I should just get off my button, even just get a two week free trial because they do that here. Yeah. But a lot of my friends, um, you know, from America, from Canada, who've gotten the, the Hulu, the, the Hulu dot JP say it's not nearly as good as, I mean, there's just a very little, there's not yeah. so much English content. And if there is, it's like older content. Yeah. And it, it it's limited. So I, I just got to give a shout out to, to VPNs and, and look into stuff yeah, like exactly, that. Exactly. Broad. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of the people out there who are listening, um, you know, are people who, who are planning on coming to Japan. Um, they want to yeah. come here they want to get here. So to think about that, I, I know like, for example, I'm a Mac guy. Um, VPN clients aren't always the, the easiest to use I, from what I gather. Um, and, but I know like, for example, if you, if you use Google, if you use Google Chrome, um, you're all set. So just uh, make sure you're using Chrome on your device. And my, <laughs> our friends, our friends in Japan had a had one that you actually, if you're a little more tech savvy, went into your router settings oh, and really? put okay. some some other name server stuff in their router settings. And then any computer hooked up to the network in their house looked like it was in the states. Ooh. So there. I think that was a paid subscription. I want to say they paid like five bucks a month yeah, for I, it. Yeah, a few people I know who they say just for the sake of making it that much cleaner and nicer will will yeah. do a, use a paid service and i i mean i mean it's, I've, i don't know why i'm doing that why am i not doing that <laughs> uh, come come to the new age of streaming <laughs> yeah i'm I, i'm a podcaster i know a thing and a half about technology maybe but i should yes um yeah yeah so vpn clients way to go guys you yeah. should you should for those of you out there who are thinking of coming here it's a solution. I always figure it's better to even if I'm VPNing, it's better to at least pay for the content, mm. and that way I'm 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 helping the system, even if I'm gaming the system a little bit. And if you want to go to Japan, you should do it right now because the exchange rate is yeah. more favorable now than it has been in like twelve years. Mm. So you can have yourself a fun vacation for a very for a very reduced price. I've been looking at flights every day. I think I'll that do is that. if you're an American. If you're a Canadian, our dollars in the toilet. So uh, oh, is it? Well, it means good for me being here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is. 
Um, it's all about oil. <laughs> but yeah, so okay, I, I'm I'm curious, guys. I'm gonna I'm jump over to another topic. Here's something I'm really ignorant about, but I've been hearing of it about more and more, just due to some podcasts I I've been a fan of over the years that have turned into TV shows. Actually, so years ago I started following. I, so I've always been a big Kevin Smith fan, like ever since the early right. '90s, since like like since um, Clerks came out, Mall Rats, all that huge Kevin Smith fan. And he got into podcasting quite a long time ago, kind of one of the pioneers of podcasting. Um, so his Smodcast Network, you know, has grown and grown. And in the early days, I became a big fan of a show called Tell Him Steve Dave, Tesdy. And now that, that, that podcast, which is essentially some, a group of guys who worked at, well, one guy who worked at his uh, Kevin Smith's comic book shop, The Secret Stash, and some of his friends, it turned into Comic Book Man, which is a reality, well, no, what did it say, unscripted reality show, something like that. Not really a reality show on uh, ANC, AMC, AMC. Mm -hmm. And uh, they talk a lot about cons. Now, I know a lot of the guys now, uh, the, you know, the, the, who are on that TV show spend a lot of the times going to Comic Cons. And they travel all around the, the America going to Comic Cons, and they go to Canada and do it, too. I've never been to one. Um, this is something that's kind of sounds like it. And from what I'm gathering, it's like a growing culture, con culture, comic con culture, anime con culture, uh, cosplay con culture, all these conventions. Um, could you maybe tell, tell the listeners a little bit about the con culture in America for anime? And I, I know you guys do take part in them. I've seen on your website that you guys uh, are on panels from time to time what what's up with cons what is it what's that all about no i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say cons are growing i'd say cons have grown i was i was just in san diego and i was talking with some people who work at a media station out there in san diego okay. and we were talking about comic con and they said that every year at this point comic con comic con has an issue with the fire marshal cuz every year they break just about every fire code with uh, how many people are packed and in that's that the big event. one right san diego's the big one right that's yeah, the mother of all cons uh, but but comic con is is of course on the side of kind of comic books and sci-fi yeah, it's not really know. representative yeah, of anime it's not an yeah, anime yeah, 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 yeah. so there are big anime cons yeah. in, in, the, in the united states the the biggest of which is anime expo which in is LA. in California. Um, and then you have like Otakon, which is in Baltimore. It's also very large. Otakon gets up to about 30, 33,000 people, I think. Oh, wow. But um, we live in, uh, we're located in Florida. And Florida, for some reason, is just this insanity of, con of conventions. Every city in Florida, I'm not even kidding, has, a, I think, at least two anime cons. And Florida has birthed like five of three, three of like the top five podcasts yeah. that still run for anime. It's yeah. weird. It's really strange. And um, in Orlando, there are, gosh, there's a, a bunch of them. There's AFO, uh, Florida Anime Experience, and uh, there's Megacon. Anime, Megacon, Anime Day Orlando. Anime Day Orlando. I mean, most most states don't need to have, you know, you, you can, can, their animated cons are very few. Like if you go to, you go to Ohio or something, there might be a few. But literally, that's like four from Orlando. There's, I think, at least two in Tampa. There's a few in, in Miami. Hmm. So there's about, a difference. How about North Dakota? <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe there's or maybe, you know, maybe. There's, Dakota I don't know. con. I don't know. There's, there's something, though. There's a big con in the Midwest, though, and, I'm, and I don't know where it is. Um, Sakura con is in Washington State, but I feel like there's one in the Midwest Aha. area. Anime Fargo. Welcome to the website of for Anime Fargo, North Dakota's there premier. There you go. There you there go. There it is. And I shouldn't have I shouldn't have talked about North Dakota in jest. Um, you're a respectable state, a great state, and there's a lot of wonderful people there. And I'm sure many of you are listening. I hope initially, but um, wow. So I mean, anime, it's it's all over the place. But yeah. but but the 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 con culture. I mean, I I assume. Um, you know, it, 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 well, it's, it's it's just an interesting thing for me. Um, yeah. uh, since I've come to Japan, I mean, it, it's it's funny. I mean, you have there are people who have stereotypes with Japan, um, and uh, people online contact me all the time. They send me messages on Twitter, or this or that. Have you seen any cosplayers today? Nope. Yeah. No. <laughs> that, that I I, nor I no. normally don't. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I wasn't that lucky in walking around Akiba today. Well, uh, exactly. <laughs> Even in the reason why I brought up the number of conventions there are in America is because 
that is just one of the many ways that conventions in Japan and America are in no way alike. Yeah. First mm-hmm. of all, there's maybe a a small handful of conventions in Japan. Maybe I, I only know of about three. Mm-hmm. Now they're now they're bigger. They're giant. But there's only a few of them. And at these conventions, you'll generally not find cosplay unless these conventions in Japan normally tend to tend to segregate the cosplayers to a cosplay area where oh, people okay. will come. They'll come with like their suitcases and unload their suitcases and put their put their costumes on and pose for photographs and things like that in a, in a designated area. But I think that Japan, one, doesn't want people walking around in massive costumes that could clog up uh, the, fl- the foot traffic. And to, you know, at a, at a convention that has a million people. Mm. Really. And I don't think they, they just don't want to bother other people. You know, some costumes are very, are very uh, scantily clad at times, uh, can, be less, can, can be inappropriate at times. And I think that they would prefer just to not have people walking around the convention like that. And yeah. I also think there's, there's an issue, well, not issue, but there's the element of, of Japanese being, of course, very polite and... They wouldn't. I don't think they would want to disturb someone who's walking around enjoying the convention. But if they're in the cosplay area, it's kind of a yes, I want you to take my picture type mm. of and, type of thing. There's that permission given. And I think I, I could be wrong, but I think that cosplaying on the street in Japan is illegal. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tend to see when I've seen cosplaying, like when I do see cosplay um, around, it tends to be like in like parks. And there's not like huh. large groups. You'll see like a group of friends, like three, four, five, six friends, and they they you know they go to a park, a kind of a quiet park, and they've got their suitcases with their costumes. And they're trying, to, and they all have like amazing cameras, right? Yeah. And they're just like you know, like it might be a group of four or five girls or a couple of guys and some girls, and they're just like they've got their costumes. And they all have a bunch of great cameras, and they're all just taking pictures of each other and having fun, and yeah, um, kind of very innocent hobby. Well, Kevin, maybe your wife has dragged you to uh, Purikura a couple times. No, yeah, she the- hasn't, but I am familiar with what they are. <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I've had some coworkers who've dragged me to a couple. At 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 Purikura, you are, which is like the print clubs in Japan. Mm-hmm. There are these and for people that don't know, they're like intensely advanced photo booths. That you can like are- manipulate the pictures and add yeah. all kinds of things and transform the pictures and make yourself look like basically an anime character. Yep, they like they'll they'll expand your the size of your eyes and stuff to make you look Western. Well, I, I I've seen a lot of girls that go into these photo booths dressed in cosplay, so I know they do that in mm. you know various Sega worlds. They're on like the sixth floor. There's a a row of of uh, photo booths like that, and girls will dress up. But I think I think all of the the lack of cosplay in Japanese conventions or or the difference in cosplay I think is for for a lot of the reasons we listed. But I also think it's because conventions in America are for the most part for the fans. The big difference is Anime Anime Expo, and that is the industry con for the states. Yeah. That is that is okay. where people go, large companies go as much to interact with fans as to get business done with each other and, and really talk kind of about the state of the industry in the states. Oh, okay. But a lot of the other conventions are very fan-driven. You'll have fan panels, you'll have all of the cosplay, you'll have just just a lot of things that are that are dictated and created for the fans where in Japan all of the conventions that I went to in Japan didn't have like any of that they they were they were for the industry you could go as a fan and you could enjoy it and see the sights and sounds but it was very clear that that they were there for business not to not to cater to the fans oh, really? um, oh okay and 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 that doesn't mean that they didn't have awesome booths set up and that fan, like I said, that fans couldn't enjoy it. But but it wasn't like in the states where there was a huge. There's in the states you'll have huge dealers rooms, buy all your anime goods. You'll have the cosplay everywhere. You'll have dozens of fan panels. Like we'll do panels as as you mentioned, and we'll have panels on everything from living in Japan to traveling in Japan to anime you've never seen. And and it's it's a fan culture. But that doesn't really exist in the Japanese cons. A lot of the panels that I saw were, the, were few, and they were all like, here's where Toei Animation is going to make announcements about their upcoming projects. And and it was very industry-focused. Yeah, I think like uh, cons in America are kind of cut loose, madness, uh, chaos. Those are, the, those are the some words I would use to describe it. I, mean, I really well, want to experience this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot of younger people and... Hmm. Uh, 
It just not sounds the, like really interesting. Like I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm kind of an old fart compared to I'm sure the average person <laughs> there. But I mean, it, it does sound like a really interesting experience. Well, a good example is cons in America have a rave. Yeah, I mean, there's a rave at most cons. Most cons have that. Yeah, and that's and a true thing. People will go in con or some some equivalent dance party. As we have and in Japan every night. Yeah, where and I live. Yes, I've oh, I've never I've never <laughs> been to I've never been to a convention outside of an anime con that's had a dance party period. Mm. <laughs> and then specifically anime cons in the states. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I, I live on uh, I live on Port Island in Kobe, Japan, which is uh, now being touted as the biomedical, what is it, the biomedical Ooh. research uh, research something of Japan, and we have a World Trading Convention Center, and every weekend we have medical conventions, and I can tell by the people I see on the train every day, there's the Raven. The yeah, Raven. they're 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 ready for the dance yep. party. They medical are. They are space. definitely. <laughs> um okay well I, okay speaking guys of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah go ahead sorry i was gonna ask you a question earlier speaking of kobe have you ever been to steak land steak, steak the, land i is that in a shoten guy is it is, 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 is that shin kobe it's, station it's shin kobe you go out on the shin kobe the shinkansen station shinkansen station shin kobe you go out on the I'm trying I'm trying to think. I want to say it's north exit. Okay. You make a left and go down the train tracks and you're going to go like through this shopping area. It's going to be like this street with the tracks on the left-hand side and stuff under the tracks and then on the right-hand side there'll be like a bunch of stores and stuff. It's called Stakeland or Suteki Dando. Do you, do you do you mean not Shinkobe station but Kobe station? Maybe. I always Is it in a Shoten guy like a covered arcade? Yes. Yes. I know what you're talking that, about. Is that I, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen the sign. My wife and I have stopped, scratched our heads, looked at it, contemplated going in, never been in there. Go, in, go there. in there. Go in there for lunch. E I, the know, lunch I, I know what I know I've seen steak land. I know what you mean. The but um I've never been there. They, they have under under um Sun Zen or under three thousand yen, you can get Kobe Gyu lunch yeah. really wow yeah wow okay. and it's good and they've been open since like 19 yeah there's normally a lineup there yeah you gotta you gotta go the success that i've had is either going right when lunch starts or on a, right on a, as on, a, then. on a weekday maybe i suppose maybe it's yeah, only, yeah it's only weekends when i'm kind of around that town or that area of the town yeah, I gotta. I, I know it's rough on weekdays, but you gotta figure something out as like a special treat one weekday because that's one of my maybe favorite. I'll to, maybe I'll have to call. I'll have to call in sick someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. A few people I work with maybe listen to this. Um, I really was sick. Um, okay. <laughs> so you guys have been to Kobe. Nice, nice. Yeah, I love Kobe. I love the Kobe uh, art art museum. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, Kobe is a wicked city. I love it. It's 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 uh, small enough to not get claustrophobic, um, and you've got the mountains and the sea, like literally just a few kilometers apart, and uh, it's big enough to have everything you want. So it's, I totally love living here. Um, so okay, I'm okay. I'm I'm curious. Um, you guys, your your podcast started in two thousand and nine. Yeah. And I'm gonna say, holy crap. Okay, so I mean, I'm <laughs> I, okay. I've been a YouTuber since 2006 and people say to me like wow you've been on youtube for so long but i mean now that i've i've been doing a, a podcast for more than a year i tell you man there's a butt ton more work involved in doing a podcast than doing just like making a video and throwing it up on the youtube um at least the kind of videos i made in the past um, so I, you know, I realized that like you see a lot of people get into podcasting. They're like, oh, I want a podcast. And they, they do it. They, they put out a few episodes and then they disappear. Um, what's kept you guys going for so long? Yeah, it's true. People don't really realize the amount of work that can go into a podcast. Um, if you want to make it a good one, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, our podcast has gone through a lot of different iterations. You know, at first we, I did a lot of micro editing of okay. the podcast, and I can tell you right now that nothing will kill a podcast quicker than micro editing it. Well, because... I don't. That's uh, something I never do. Like for example, essentially, unless like there was because I re, I normally run a a clean podcast unless you said something really offensive, <laughs> which you haven't. <Right>. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but then I would mark the time signature and something and go in and edit it for like someone dropped like a huge F bomb or this or that, which right. I did in a few of the first episodes. And then like I got some complaints and I was like, well, I'd rather have this clean than not. Um, but uh, so I just essentially like the interview portion of the show. Um, it's just one take. Which the, makes uh, it much easier. It's yeah. I mean, I know I know other podcasts that will even do things like editing out um, non fluencies in speech. Yeah. Like ums and uhs. Oh god, I <laughs> and to a trained ear, like to me, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to say, Oh, I'm so trained, but to someone who's 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 recorded like six hundred hours of podcasts, I can tell exactly in your recording where you've edited. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell just from like the in at the the uh from even it's a tip for other podcasts, don't micro edit. And the reason why we've been able to do this for so long is because we've, I feel like we've sort of mastered the process of preparation and the process of having a format. Okay. And yeah. our, our, our podcast outlines can be up to eight pages long. Oh, wow. But, but we've sort of mastered the, the process of doing it. It's almost like fill in the blank at this point. It's, uh, there's a system, we have sort of a system that, that allows us to update fresh content really quickly. Okay. And, you know, I think we, if you don't count like the anime watching, yeah, I'd say the total weekly effort is probably six hours. Well, I mean, I, I completely understand. I mean, um, so. I'm this is episode fifty nine, um, and I've just I've just gotten better at. I mean, I've got a lot, <laughs> I've got a long way to go. Um, you know, I would like I, I know I will get better and better. It's it's practice, though, right? You know, as as you do it, the more you do it, the better you get. Right. And we didn't um, we didn't get we I would say when we started broadcasting live because we do a live broadcast uh, now on YouTube mm -hmm, every mm -hmm. every week. And then the episode gets put up later on iTunes with whatever, again, kind of what you were saying, a couple minor edits. If I'm dumb and smash my face into the mic or something like that, um, Mitsugi will edit that out. Yeah. But we uh when we started broadcasting live, it, it really helped with non-fluencies. And of course, I just said we, uh, so you can see we're not perfect. But with practice, you you get to that place where you're more comfortable speaking, you're more comfortable pausing and letting yourself think for a second, and, which is big. And, and mm. I, I got to say, Kevin, I got to hand it to you because I have done a few podcasts on my own. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's extremely difficult to do a podcast by yourself. Well, so, but to be honest, though, um, I, I don't really consider it a podcast by myself in a way because, I mean, I really think there's – from what I gather, from what I've heard from other podcasters and people I've talked to, there's really two models that kind of work. One, you need a co-host. Or two, right. you bring a guest on every week. Yeah. Um, and I've always – so the way – I have kind of a system, too. I kind of have like a formula where I have uh, an intro – um, I kind of welcome people to the podcast. Then I have a section where I might talk about a little bit about news about myself or what I'm doing or dealing with or something. Then I have the interview, and then I just kind of have an outro. Um, so the 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 show is really geared towards not so much my. It's not geared towards myself. It's about the topic, and the right. guest, and because it's for example like last week. Um, um. Uh, the or let's see, like I uh, um I'm saying last week. Now all of a sudden I'm brain farting. What who the heck did I have on last week? Um uh last week's episode, Kevin. Oh my gosh. And now I'm gonna leave this in. Um, you know, I did an episode uh recently about uh just a a teacher who has, was working in a very stable job. He had a really good position actually as a um uh an ALT, but he was uh, working for a board of education, a direct hire ALT. And he quit his job to set up his own school. So um, cool. we talked about do, making the plunge to set up your own school. Um, it did an interview with a guy who was an ALT, who is now a professional photographer and owns a big photography studio based out of Japan. He travels around the world doing the photography thing. Um, I've done interviews. I did an interview with a guy who skateboarded across Japan. Uh, another guy who cycled across Japan. I did one with a guy who's a... Uh, was basically like a CSI agent in Los Angeles who now teaches forensic pathology at a university here in, in, in Japan. So it's, it's focused mostly it's on them. Uh, I guess that's why it makes it easier for me. Um, 
but I, I guess at the same time, uh, where where the difficulties come is some people are very willing to talk and open to talk and share their stories. Other people, um, it takes a bit more work to get the story out of them. Yeah, right. I, I would I would definitely say that uh, if you're thinking of going into podcasting, being comfortable with with speaking, or at least being committed to becoming comfortable yeah. with speaking, mm, is a helps. huge one. Um, so, like for us, we we tend to have three people for yeah. show, three hosts. But I mean, I kind of attribute our continued longevity to the to our chemistry. All the hosts have always either been um, really close friends, or my brother has also been involved in the podcast. Okay. And I think we've been lucky sort of being able to rotate hosts because, you know, when you've been doing this for going on uh, six years, which is kind of crazy, um, you know, you lose people. Yeah. So we've had, so right now we, we currently have three hosts and one frequent guest. And then we ha- but, but we also have four retired hosts. So we've been through, we've been through quite a few people. So, and, and, Maybe one of those retires hosts may someday come back. Maybe they won't. But right. but as Mitsuki was saying, having that that chemistry and and everyone kind of being on board with what the mission of the show is, I think really helps because, you know, we started doing this as Mitsuki said at the start. We started doing it to make make a community and to talk about something that we loved. And that really was the motivation behind it. And it still is. I mean, as it's grown, we've gotten a sponsor or whatever. And that's awesome because now we're not paying our own hosting fees. Um, So, but it really is a labor of love. And I'll see people go into podcasting and, and I've actually had the question of, okay, how do I make money off of it? And I'm like, if you're going into this with the plan of making money off of it, with the plan of sustaining off of it, not even just making money, but sustaining yourself, you're you're in for a bumpy ride on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible. There are tons of podcasters who do it and, and more kudos to them. And I think, you know, it's it's good to get kind of what's owed in, in a way. But at the same time, it's like you, you got to go into it with your heart first on, I think, with podcasting. Absolutely. I give that same advice to people on YouTube as well, because I have friends who who I started with on YouTube back in the day who are now doing it professionally. They make a ton of money and yeah. others who haven't um, others who are still quote unquote journeymen. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, you know, the, the people who you meet who go into it because I, you know, once the partnership program came in years ago and people could start making Google ads and some money, there were people who were like, I'm going to go into YouTube and I'm going to make a lot of money. Yeah, those people—they were flashes in the pan. They didn't last. Or not even so. That 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 kind of eludes that they were something special. They they just weren't around very long. Yeah. Um. You got you got to get into it for the long haul. But I mean, you, you do it because you love it. I suppose, and that shows through, right? Yeah. Um, I think the love translates to the people can tell. You know, when you uh, have that passion. Mm, absolutely. I mean, to be honest. Um, I'm going from, um, I mean, I, as a YouTuber, I made money. Um, uh, at some points I made some quite good money. Um, and now I've, I've, I basically put most of my energy into podcasting because this really makes me happy. And then right. when I say a lot of money, I'm talking like, you know, buy a six pack of beer on the weekend kind of money. I'm not yeah. talking about paying the rent money. <laughs> yeah, not that well, kind of money. But- and and that's and that was my qualifier too, is is you can you can make some money, but oftentimes you're like, Oh yay, I can pay some, pay my host month and maybe give away an extra prize or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Or I can go out and have like I, I yeah, exactly and, and you know, I can go go to Starbucks and buy a couple of extra coffees that I normally would be able to do or something like that. But um Okay, well, okay, you know, um, I don't want guys, I don't want to keep you guys too much longer, but I'm curious. You guys, uh, I wouldn't say recently, when when I I heard you both interviewed on the G Pod with Anthony Joe of Guy Jim Pod, great guy. Yeah, Anthony yeah. is a great guy, and I love Anthony, and I love Guy Jim Pod because Guy Jim Pod does actually the Guy Jim Pod blog features the Just Japan podcast um, several times a month. Yay! So Yay. thank you, Guy Jim Pod blog. Um, so yeah, no, the 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 Just Japan podcast is uh, featured there a few times uh, a month in the blog, which definitely helps us a lot, We're getting a lot more awesome listeners involved and whatnot. And Anthony, Anthony is actually he was a guest on uh, an earlier episode where I, I I interviewed him about the G Pod, so he's he's a great dude. Um, but I'm so when when I listened to the interview on the G Pod, 
And, and by the way, everyone, I'll put a link to the G pod in the show notes at busankevin.com. Um, you guys were both in Japan. Yep. yep. And now you're That's not. That's yep. true. So we're not. What happened there? <laughs> I know you moved, but um, so you guys came to Japan. Uh, can you, in a, in a nutshell, tell us about your little, uh, you know, your, your Japan experience? Well, it begins with selling everything. Yeah. Oh. So wow. I basically sold everything that I had, everything. I sold my car. I sold. Condensed life down into yeah. about four suitcases. Yeah, the whole, every, everything. And, uh, you know, you, you go. To Japan, and you know, we we got jobs in 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 Akaiwa, up in 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 Ibaraki. Okay. And um, Ibaraki is a is a is a nice place. I mean, it's 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 Quiet, urban huh? enough because you, because you're close to Tokyo, but it's rural rural enough that you have the charm of rural, of rural life too. We lived we lived very close to the the Joban Sen, the Joban train line. So it was a forty minute straight shot into Ueno. Right. Oh, so wow. well, that's that's pretty easy then that's good. Yeah. yeah it's not so bad um and uh yeah life in japan was really great you know sometimes sometimes i miss various aspects of japan my favorite thing in japan flat out is onsen without a doubt love onsen um if i could i would if, they, if we if i had an onsen that was just like the one in, near my house in ibaraki i would go every weekend mm. but fortunately the american culture doesn't really allow for you know you getting totally naked with a bunch of people yeah, that's a shame, actually, because I understand onsen culture is awesome. Yeah, and uh, you're fairly close to Osaka, mm-hmm. right? So you should go to Spa World, Osaka. Yeah, my wife, that's... my wife actually worked there when she was younger. Really, oh, she was in her early twenties. She worked at Spa World. She said, "Yeah, I know Spa World. I know that's in Tennoji. Yeah, in Osaka. It's the best place ever. Pretty impressive. <laughs> it's like it's like the." The naked hot bath Disney World of Japan. <laughs> yep, it really it is. is. That's a perfect way mm-hmm. to describe it. Yeah. And in, in Ibaraki, I was really lucky. I, I lived in a full size Japanese house. It oh wow. Huge. I mean, pe- people always make jokes about, oh, you're living in Japan. You must live in like a place that's the size of, uh, you know, my closet. It was like it's like two and a half times the size of the apart- of your apartment now. Yeah, my apartment now is less than my apartment of what my house in Japan was like. I mean, it was like. S L D K. Oh. So and uh and the rent was cheap. So l- l- life in Ibaraki was really great, you know, and I worked in an Akaiwa for a year and um then I switched over and started working for for one of the largest ALT companies in Japan. And okay. uh you may be able to guess who that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just and, leave uh, it at that. <laughs> but um, you know, my uh it's but I never really planned on making it into a career, mm. and especially with the way that the exchange rate was was shifting, mm. I, uh, you know, I thought that it was time to just sort of come back and, um, you know, start start doing what I what I had done before. And when I did what I did before, I went to Japan was I was a I was a research analyst. So very oh. similarly, I um, I went over there and I started out as a Kaiwa, and then I actually moved into an international school. I taught second grade American curriculum and and that was that was a lot of fun but I never I never had goal of being a teacher Mm -hmm. and 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 I and I love I love education there's nothing wrong with with people who are teachers I miss Um, the little kids and uh my mom started out as an elementary school teacher so it's near and dear to my heart and I'm, I'm glad I had the experience but I have a master's in business and and my love is in marketing and international business and things like that. And my, my Japanese just isn't up to scratch. I'm not N2 or N1 and I can't get a job in the field that I really want to work in because my Japanese isn't there. So it only made sense to stay just shy of two years and come back because I felt like if I stayed much longer than that, potential employers would look at my resume and go, you haven't worked in the States in three years nothing you you have is relevant anymore no oh, absolutely makes sense yeah 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 no no for example someone like myself i am a licensed teacher in canada i'm a k through six um you know and I, I taught in canada before i came here um in public schools and so i teach now uh i teach at an international school so um i'm i'm, I'm doing what i'm I, i'm doing what i do 
um, you know, and uh, will I be moving back home? Yeah, probably. Actually, that's kind of my family. We're, we're planning on that in, in not the near future, but the next few years. That's the goal. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing I always talked to. We've talked about in previous episodes of this podcast. Um, teaching is a great means to get to Japan. And it's a great way to experience Japan. Um, and it's definitely not for everyone. But yeah. it's, a, it's a great way to get there. And some for some time uh, for some people, it's a great way to get a visa. Um, because yeah. there's a lot of people I've interviewed on this podcast in the past who want to come to Japan. They had a business idea or they wanted to do this or that. And coming here was, as a teacher, allowed them to get the visa and allowed them to get the time, to get their feet on the ground and kind of explore the country and really kind of survey their options. And that's and that's we've talked about that a lot on our show too. Is how once you're in the country, it's way easier to have doors open to you. Oh, absolutely. No matter, what, no matter what your visa says, it's way easier to find opportunity once you're physically there. Yeah, because once you're here, then then you can find an opportunity and change that visa. You know exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Well, um, you know what, guys? I don't want to keep you much longer. It's getting pretty late here in Japan land. Um, I'm wondering, so c- could you share with the Just Japan podcast uh, listeners, um, where can they find you guys online? You can find us at our main page, aaapodcast.com. And you can also find us on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Stitcher. I think we're on that app and probably a bunch of other third party podcast apps that our mm. listeners have put us into over the years. That, yeah, <laughs> you're not familiar with. I've, I've been hearing that a lot more recently yeah. myself. My people are like, I, I, people are like uh, Kevin, we download you from here and here and here. I'm like, oh. Yeah, we, we, had head. Someone, we had someone say once, like, oh, I submitted your RSS feed to this. I hope it's okay. And we're like, yeah, go for well, it. Well, more people hear it? it? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if you want to tweet us, you can tweet us at AAA, at AAA Podcast. And we're live on YouTube on Sundays at 4 p.m. EST. So that's 5 a.m. JST. <laughs> but uh, 4 p.m. EST on YouTube. So and of course, all of our old YouTube episodes, live recordings are up on YouTube. So right. if you'd rather see our faces, I was about to say beautiful, but then edited myself, <laughs> see our faces, you can uh, see that on our you YouTube are channel. You attractive oh. people. I've watched your videos. Oh, it's, thank it, you. you guys, it's, it's, it's good stuff. No, no, I've watched a few of your, of your live casts, your hangouts. Uh, good stuff, guys. It's definitely worth watching. Everyone out there um, interested thank in Japan you. stuff, anime stuff. I recommend. Um, and for those of you who may maybe you didn't catch uh, all those links, go to the show notes at BusanKevin.com. All the links are there. It's all cool. Everything will be there for this episode. Um, yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for doing this this week. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Kevin. And uh, and feel, feel free to use us as a resource whenever you need. So. Oh, absolutely. A- oh, by the way, I just actually sure. remember before I sign out, you guys are also nominated for a 2015 podcast award. We yes. were, yes. So um, yep. you guys are up against This American Life. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Just like last year. <laughs> so uh, good luck. Thank you very much. I, hope, um, I, I am I, I'm, I'm up against the Amateur Traveler um, podcast. Uh, this podcast is in the travel section. And I mean, I don't know what the, the exact analytics are for the Amateur Podcast, uh, the Amateur Traveler podcast, but I know that I've got 3,300 uh, Twitter followers, and he's got something like twenty five thousand. So uh, that means nothing. That yeah. means nothing, right? Throw it out. <laughs> we know that feeling. Yeah, it's like yay, vote for us, even though we're up against NPR. <laughs> well, then again, I actually know what I can't even compare that. Oh, but nonetheless, you guys will get it. You will. Um, well, thank you. Best of luck to you too. Yeah, and uh, take care, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin. Take Talk care. to you again. <laughs> Please hang up and try again. Well, I would like to thank uh, Chucky and Mitsugi for, for taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast and share their wealth of information with us about anime. Um, very cool, very interesting stuff. Um, you know, Yeah, so guys, thank you so much. Go check out their podcast. Go check out all, all of their stuff. Um, you can go to uh, aaapodcast.com. Um, and all their links are there. I'm also going to put all their, their contact information and their links in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. 
All right, folks, that does it for another episode of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea. I'm a Canadian living and working right here in Japan. And each week I bring to you a different episode about cool Japan stuff. <laughs> so um, some of you may have realized that a few days ago I dropped another uh, Tech Japan mini podcast. Those come out from time to time, not necessarily with a lot of frequency. They come out when I do have a bit of time. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy those short podcasts. Um, also for my patrons out there, you guys um, got the March 2011 bonus pod. There's going to be uh, several bonus pods coming up starting in April, so you guys uh, will enjoy those. Um, yeah, so it's good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Uh, this was a, r- a really great episode. It was a lot of fun for me to do. Every episode's a lot of fun for me to put together, and I'm, I'm really thankful that you guys take the time to stop by and listen. <clears throat> I'm really thankful that you guys take the time to interact with me in the Just Japan podcast community. And you can interact with the community uh, over on Twitter, at jlandkev. Uh, and really the place to be is the uh, Just Japan podcast Facebook page. So that link is in the show notes at busankevin.com. Go over there and like it. You'll realize that I spent a lot of time on the Facebook page, interacting with people, replying to comments, posting things, talking about things, sharing photos, experiences, news articles, all that stuff. Uh, so it's a great place to be. Um, you can also check me out on YouTube, uh, youtube.com uh, slash Busan Kevin or youtube.com slash jlandkev. Again, those links, all those links are going to be in the show notes. And if you ever have any questions about the podcast, you want to get a hold of me, um, just, you know, send me some feedback, say hi, drop me a note. Um, you can email me at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, I'm always around to answer your questions as best I can. Um, I, I'm pretty forgetful, though, sometimes. So, guys, if, I, if it takes me a little while to get back to you, uh, I apologize. I don't take any offense to it. I'm a bit scattered. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, again, that is it for another episode of the Just Japan Podcast. Remember, you can listen to us, subscribe on iTunes, on Stitcher Internet Radio, or listen to us on SoundCloud. And I want to thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, this has been a really amazing month. Um, to be honest, uh, the month of March 2015, we basically almost doubled the amount of downloads that we had uh, of any other month. Um, up until this point, February was the biggest month we had at the Just Japan podcast, and we've almost doubled that month for downloads. So, wow. <laughs> thank you all so much. You guys are amazing. And I will be talking to you all again next week when another episode of the Just Japan podcast drops. So take care. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. Hope you're happy, you're healthy, and I'll be talking to you soon.